Okay, this is not a ride-sharing video. I repeat, this is not a ride-sharing video. What up, folks? Once again, it is your boy, Tim, the handsome liberal. Unfortunately, we had a glitch in the system. I do appreciate you folks that are returning back, but the question we were asking, just to start it back off, and folks who are in the box, feel free to filter back into the box, but the question we were asking is, is there a real legitimate fear of Trump being reelected in 2024? The entire premise of the program is because Bill Maher stated on a CNN interview, uh, I believe it was yesterday, that he has said so many jokes about President Trump that he believes President Trump has a deep-seated personal hatred for him. And the man actually feels they, he actually feels that his safety would be in danger if President Trump is reelected. Now, as I stated before, it doesn't matter who is the commander-in-chief. We're all going to believe that some of the policies or legislation they're promoting is not in our best interest. But what about your safety? Do you feel that, say, since President Biden is in office or when Obama was in office, do you feel like your safety was in danger? What is it about President Trump that would lead someone to suggest they don't feel safe as an American citizen? Or is that just overblown, ridiculous hype? That's what we're talking about today. We'll go straight to the box because we did have a hiccup of sorts. All right, going back to the box, we'll take it straight off with Jeff. One nine eight seven. Good afternoon, Jeff. And I see in the comments, Papa Thumb says no simple answer. I like to hear the long form of it, though. Jeff, is there a reason to be fearful of Trump getting reelected? No, I would appreciate it if Trump got reelected. You would appreciate it. I would, yes. Yeah. Why do you think someone would suggest that they feel like that if he gets reelected, he's going to take revenge on some of his adversaries? I mean, if he does, he does. But I mean, I think the country was a lot safer under him than than Biden. Well, how you did know, you feel I, about the? How did you feel about the Black Lives Matter protests of 2020? Now, remember, all of that happened under Trump's watch. Man, I I think that was all propaganda started by the liberal the liberal side. So you don't believe there was actually any so, true riots? You just believe it was propaganda? No, there was true riots, but I think it was brought on by 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 the liberal left. Okay. Well, if you look at 1930s and 1940s Germany, it was propaganda about the Jewish folks, but it still was also dangerous. So the point I'm making is propaganda can be dangerous as well. So if you're admitting that there were riots during his time, even if you believe it was propaganda by the left, did, do you see any reason to have felt for your safety during the Trump administration? I mean, I don't really feel for my safety where I'm located, but I mean, mm -hmm. if I was in some of them cities, Hell yeah, I'd feel for my safety. Yeah. Okay. You Do you feel I mean? for your like, safety? Do you have any of those issues under the Biden administration? I mean, no, not 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 those type of safeties from where I'm at. But I mean, if I lived in like New York or maybe so, like I live in Louisiana, so maybe like if I lived in 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 the city of New Orleans, I mean, now luckily we didn't have any of that that I, to my knowledge. But I mean. I mean, that stuff is dangerous, man. It, it, you know what I mean? Like, people just going around and burning stuff and <laughs> throwing stuff through windows and stuff like that. Yeah. Man. It's, <laughs> so it you, often, you often hear Trump talking about red cities and blue cities. You know, crime has went up under the Biden administration. Have you seen, do you believe you've seen a, an increase of crime during the Biden administration compared to Trump? Um, not per se, maybe a little bit, but not, not that I've seen. Right. I mean, I'm, so I would have to answer that fairly. No, not so really. So what is it about, you but started again, out I'm like. Not in, I'm not, I'm not in one of those cities that, right. that crime is a big factor. Okay. Now you Other started than, out by saying. I lived in New Orleans. 
Yeah, you started out by saying you would appreciate a return of Trump as opposed to Biden. What is it about Trump that you favor over President Biden? Um, probably my financial situation. Okay, so with it's, so it's Biden brought on with the with the Biden administration. All right, fair enough. So if the if Biden got inflation under control. Would you think, let's say, for instance, okay, that we, we got, what, a year in, almost a little bit less than two years before we vote again. If throughout 2024, by January of next year, Biden had got the economy under control, inflation was back under control, gas prices were back down to $2 a gallon, would you then consider voting for him to be reelected? Uh I don't know. It would have to be. It have to determine who's who's on the opposing side. What if it's Trump? Oh, I would definitely vote for Trump over Biden any day of the week. So if Trump, if if Biden, <laughs> towards, if Biden towards the end of his term was giving you the same economy as Trump, then what else is it about Trump that would give him the edge over Biden? For me personally, I think it's. I think the rest of the world. And a whole and, and the rest of the world, I think they respected Trump more than they respect Biden. You know, I I, I just don't feel that. I it's clear to me that the Chinese do not respect this country for the mere fact that they've sent drones clear as day all over this country, and it took a little over a week to be able to do what we had to do to get rid of them. Yeah, I don't. I don't disagree with the. I don't and, disagree. And, with I, and I just ahead. don't think. I just don't think. You know, as crazy as you want to call Trump, as crazy as you want to say, but I don't think that would have happened under his administration. And I, and for the people that say, oh, it has happened. They sent these drones already. I really don't believe that either, because as crazy as Trump was. I don't think the Chinese or anybody else would would take a chance on doing that to him. Well, let me ask you would... this. Let me ask you this. Now, Trump all Trump constantly blamed China for the virus. Do you believe what he was suggesting in in that case, where China was responsible for that virus? We don't have to say the name of the virus. We all know what we're talking about. But do but, you believe Trump, Trump was correct in that? You know. I, I, I mean, maybe uh, nobody. I don't think anybody really knows, to be quite honest with you. To be fair, nobody Man, he, really knows nobody where knows, it came from. If nobody knows where it came from, then why was he saying this one country over and over again? If he don't know, wouldn't that make him wrong for doing that? I mean, it would, but I mean, possibility it could be Chi it could be China. Yeah, but you can't attack a country and defame a country over a possibility. Either you know what you're talking about or you don't. He was saying it definitively that it came from that country. I, I don't I'm not sure. I can't answer that. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, what about the idea that because he was saying it came from that country, Asians were complaining that they were being victims of hate crimes all over America with people suggesting that you're where the virus came from. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I've never seen Asians complain of a hate crime. Really? Yeah. It was all over the... What about the idea that the, even the federal government, the FBI, claims that under President Trump, due to his rhetoric, hate crimes in America increased overall? You, did, you, did you hear that at all? I would... I would believe that, yes, but not so much per se towards Asian. Okay, so but you you do believe their part, not necessarily towards Asian, but you do believe their premise that under Trump, because of his language, hate crimes overall increased in this country. Yeah, I would say that. Yes. Do you think it's a good thing to put him back in as commander in chief, knowing that? I mean, I think people personally, I think people vote for their issues. You know what I mean? And, and for me personally, you know, me being 35 years old, a single male, I personally feel like financially 
it was easier in the Trump administration than it is in the Biden administration. So that's a fair point. I would typically vote. I would typically vote for maybe Trump or a DeSantis or somebody else that I know that could get a handle on the 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 the, the things that help me out. I mean, I think right. people, I think people vote. I I don't know if people vote, but I vote for the things that help me out. You know what I mean? Right. And, and so let me let me, me take being it a from single your... person. Right. Let me take it from that angle where you vote based on what helps you out. And that makes perfect sense. Everybody vote based on their own issues. If I'm a minority and I'm just like you, where I believe the president's language has increased hate crimes. Now, as a minority, I'm likely to be the victims of those hate crimes, as opposed to you who might be worried about your 401k. Based on the fact that I might be the victim of those hate crimes, who should I vote for? I mean, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I'm i not really sure who you should vote for. I mean, should I vote for the guy that may make me the victim of a hate crime? I mean, I think... I, I really don't know. I can't answer that question. I think, personally, me... Personally, towards me, and your chat probably hates me, but I... I personally believe that everything's based around economy and money you i agree need with money that. you need money to survive i and agree with that right now for me personally it's been a real strap these last two and a half three years and and for me personally it's it's deciding whether what i'm if i'm going to eat or put or get medication or what or put gas in my truck to go to work you know what I mean? I, I think it's, you know, yeah, put aside. I, I, yeah, I, I got to part ways with you, but I will say I totally understand your, the plight you're talking about in terms of economics. But it, when you know, when you notice the things you're talking about, you know, trying to eat, trying to fill up your vehicle, trying to survive, none of that stuff included you being a victim of something that could cost you your life. So understand there is a scale of what people are focusing on in terms of how important it is. You're talking about the finer things in life. Some folks are just talking about maintaining life itself, but I got to move it on. You're always welcome to come back. This is our first time talking, Jeff? No, it's our second time. Ex excellent. Come on back to any time, man. I appreciate chatting with you. All right, buddy. Thank you. I love you live, man. It's so, it's so it. it's good live. Good shit. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right in the comments what about white hate what is give me your description and i'll gladly elaborate on it because there could be hatred coming from all directions but give me your description of what that is people are more likely to believe lies than they would truth and fact roland rolando vega i yeah i do agree with that certainly if the lies are what they want to hear and that's on both sides of the aisle uh maybe it'll make sense if they read it right to left, <laughs> I'm not Israeli. I'm not an Israeli. All right, let me keep it moving. Appreciate you folks that are holding on. Tap the screen. Shit, that's enough of us here to potentially get your boy up to 20,000 likes. Helps out the algorithms. Brings me more MAGA. This is always a MAGA-friendly program. I do welcome liberals as well, but MAGA are my preferred guests. Nevertheless, let's keep it going. We'll keep it with uh, Brent. Blackwell, I'll move it along a little. There's a, there's a host of you here. Brent, good afternoon. Is there a reason to actually fear President Trump getting reelected? Uh, no, sir. But I, hey, first of all, I want to uh, say that I, I love how you do your lives. Uh, Thank because you. Because I like how you do a one person because a lot of times these lives, you'll have a five or six people in here. And whoever yeah. the host is, they'll have maybe... You know, four people going against one person, you can't get any kind yeah. of word in, and there's no nothing that comes from it. So I appreciate that <clears throat> how you do that for each other. Uh, but what I but I want to what I wanted to kind of talk about was <clears throat> you're talking about the 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 hate crime statistics going up under Trump. So yeah. what I was what I was curious about is you're saying it's because of his rhetoric. So I, I think it's I think it's something different. I think it's because well, well let me I'll let you continue, but I just want to say yeah. let me make it clear. I'm not saying that the FBI is what said that, but go ahead. So okay, yeah. So I'm not gonna dispute 
a statistic that says hate crimes go up because a statistic is a st- statistic. Okay, I'm not disputing that. What I'm disputing is the reason for it because you, you uh, mentioned his rhetoric. So what I'm saying is I think it has a lot more to do with how the media is one sided and you have and it's consistently and it's they've even done it after he's been out. It still focuses on Trump. He's in every conversation every day on these major media sites. And since he's been gone, their viewership has just dwindled because that was how they focused all of their their attention. True. So when you got stirring the pot and you got people saying this man's evil and taking everything he says, put it out of context, spin it, cut it up and throw it out there to stir up the masses then you're you're throwing gasoline on a fire that you created. So that's So let me so let me ask you that question. So you believe the constant negativity focused around Trump could potentially lead to, as you say, throwing gas on the fire. Exactly. I mean even when he did even when he did wonderful things, they wouldn't they wouldn't give him his flowers. They were still trying to find a way to say that it was not good for America or it was bad in some way. Or they would just or they would try to throw a they would they either not cover it at all, or they would try to uh, give the, the credit to someone else, or just say. So let me let me ask you, to you, based on what you're saying, if constant negativity can lead to you know lead to all types of bad incidents. Now we know on the right there is constant negativity towards Nancy Pelosi. Now her husband recently faced an attack. Do you see a possibility that the constant negativity from the right on Nancy Pelosi could be throwing gas on the fire, leading to her husband being a victim of an attack? Well, I think I think that's a bad example because I don't think the guy who attacked that that one was a Trump supporter or involved in any way with uh, supporting Trump. But you could, you know, but there are other things in the past they've. They vandalized her house. They've done other things, I think, which would be better examples of what you're. Yeah, but did you hear the? Did you hear the actual rhetoric, the wording that this guy was talking about? He talked about, you know, going after her for treason and stuff. I mean, this this is like literally out of the right wing playbook. He's not. He's not some crazy guy that showed up like Jody Foster for Reagan. He was talking about, you know, treason and, and her committing crimes against the country. That comes. That is right wing. You don't see that as right wing mantra. Oh no, because uh, because so what we first of all we don't really know much about why he did it. They haven't released much information on that. But what they've said, uh, what he said could be can, could could go either way. There are plenty of Democrats that are mad at uh, Nancy Pelosi as well, just for and just for the simple reason of that that she's profiteered off of, and not just her. And this this goes both ways. It goes in for Republicans and Democrats, they profiteered with inside trading with no knowledge beforehand. They make moves in stock market. They get rich while we all, while we all have to, and basically anytime anybody makes money in the market, it's because somebody else lost money. That's how it works. So if you get somebody else lost that money and the person who lost that money didn't have the information that you had. So that a lot of people are mad at her, uh, her and her husband and all of of Congress really uh, for that kind of thing. So, I don't uh, see that. And, I watch a, and, um, I watch a, yeah, I watch a lot of media, mostly right wing, but I do watch plenty of left wing media as well. I don't see the, the squad or any other folk, the Bernie Sanders. I don't see people going out to Pelosi like you're talking about. Almost all of the hatred I see towards Nancy Pelosi comes from the right. Now you correct in saying people do not like politicians getting wealthy. That's true. But when it comes to talking about she's a traitor and stringing up for treason and things like that, I've never heard anybody on the left talking that way. That is straight out of a right wing playbook. Well let's look at uh let's look at uh AOC, right? AOC yeah. is a very popular Democrat and she just won re election. But do you remember her re election campaign? Do you, do you remember seeing the videos of her in a doing a town hall and pretty much mocking her own supporters because they were they were uh explaining their grievances, which were, were very yeah. far sources. Yeah. And she was and they and they felt they felt ignored. They felt like she wasn't she wasn't uh hearing their voices. She wasn't advocating hard enough for the left causes that they wanted. Yeah. So they, and that was uh, it was not a good scene. So, I mean, the left. The, so you have extreme people. Yeah, but were they talking about actually stringing her up for treason? Have you heard of Democrats talking about taking a woman's life? I've heard of plenty yeah. of folks on the right Hell talking yeah. about taking the life of Nancy Pelosi. I've never heard folks on the right talking about taking the life of another Democrat like that. Even even mentioned in cinema. 
I have even Tulsi Gabbard. I have not heard people on the left talking about taking their lives like that. I oh, hear that yeah. about Nancy Pelosi all the time. Well, I mean, I, I've heard it. I've heard it about uh, Nancy, about uh, Gabbard and Anchin and Cinema, uh, and basically anybody who's not who's not helping that agenda get pushed. I mean, I hear it. Maybe <laughs> maybe you don't. I do. And and yeah, this, could be could and, be could be my yeah it could be and, me me having an oversight. And, okay, so you don't so you don't necessarily think the guy that went in on Nancy Pelosi's husband was a right winger at all. I, I don't. I, I actually I think all the all the evidence supports the opposite of that. But, but let's not even, let, let's let's take your point. Your point's still valid. I'm just saying not with him because there right. because because her her house has been vandalized. They've they've spray painted a uh, spray painted on her garage. They've done other things. So. You're, you you have a valid point. I just don't think that was a good example. Okay, so we're not not disputing that. What I'm but what I'm saying is that any anybody who's going to be the leader of a party, like people don't like Mitch McConnell, you know, I, I would consider myself libertarian. I don't like Mitch McConnell. I don't like neoconservatives. I don't like I don't I don't like what I call fake fake Republicans that are all part of the establishment. I feel like there's, there's well, wait, wait, what is it? Wait, let me ask you about that. You said fake Republicans. A lot of folks refer to fake Republicans as rhinos. No. Yeah. Trump runs as a Republican. Do you see him as a genuine, authentic Republican? No, God no. He was I mean, he was a liberal his whole life. He was a, he was a liberal his whole life, which is why we love him because because he's a, he's a person who uh, he's a person who do, who speaks to the he's a he's a billionaire who speaks to the common man better than all these politicians because he's he's worked with them. He's owned these businesses. He's had to work with contractors. He's been out there. He's done the groundwork. He knows how to. He, he's worked with all the, the blue collar people and knows them where the politicians have been getting in politics their whole life. They've been getting a check from the government their entire life. They don't know us. They don't live in it, live in our world. They're not in it. They're not they're not with us at all. They're they are propped up there as faces for an agenda for establishments that they want. And they are, have no no real interaction with the common man, which is what yeah. was one of the reasons AOC was popular, because she was a bartender in New York. So, I mean, if you're if you come from if you come from uh blue collar or you come from the real world or if you have that real world experience you're gonna be able to Trump was, I don't here's what you're losing me. Trump was born rich. I mean his claim to fame he often says is I started out with a million dollar loan from my dad. Most people barely even know their damn dad. How can you be part of the common man if you could get a million dollars from your dad, you are you already are in the ninety nine percent. The minute he gives you, or the one percent rather, you're already part of the one percent. The minute he gives you the loan, because he came out there and confirmed everything we've been saying and thinking for years. When he came out and just told everybody right away that hey, everything they're doing, just like Dave Chappelle said in his skit, everything they're doing is it's true, and, and I know it because because I, I've been able to profiteer off of it. And he just and he ripped the veil away. He told us exactly what it was. And like I said, he has he has relationships with common man, common people. And they try to claim he's a racist. But the guy has been he's been doing things for minorities documented uh, for years and years and years. So why do you think minorities don't see what you're talking about? You're uh, not the first person I've gotten on the program to suggest that. Trump's done yeah. so much for black people. Yet black people overwhelmingly do not favor Trump. I think he did better with blacks than most other Republicans, but his numbers are still dismal. What is it about Trump that folks are not seeing what you're talking about? Well, th this is what it is, because uh, because, like I said, the one sided media. Right. So you've got them going after him and they go after him harder than they go after everybody else because he fights back. So. And so you've got a one-sided media that that most of Black Americans follow because they're they're not. I don't want to call them monolithic voters, but when you only get when you're only getting uh, ten percent of uh, when over ninety percent is voting one way, then it becomes a, a little bit of a monolithic voter. And Trump was the only one who actually even he's the only Republican who even cared. Every other Republican just wrote that off. They said, "Well, I'm going to lose the Black vote. I don't care." He went out there knowing he was going to lose it, and he still reached out to them. He still did second chess acts. Let me let me ask you this now. I'm sure you I'm sure you realize that most African Americans were heavily in favor of the first black president. Talking about Obama, how do you think Trump suggesting that Obama was born in Kenya? And I know it started with Hillary Clinton, but Trump took it to a whole new level. How do you see Black America viewing President? Trump trying to get Obama disqualified on the grounds that he was born in some other country. <clears throat> well, he wasn't running for president then, but I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and say that that was a smart move by him. 
Uh, and yeah, there's going to be people who are going to be mad about that and, and probably stay, stay mad about it for a long time. Yeah. I think, I think you should have have focused on what about the, what about the claims from president Trump that black lives matter is a terrorist group. Now, you know, once again, black, most African-Americans favor that organization. And that organization has a hell of a lot of corruptness. I'm not going to deny yeah. that. Talking yeah. about the founding members. I do agree with that. But there's a difference between the slogan and the movement. President Trump suggested that Black Lives Matter is a terrorist outfit. How do you see African-Americans viewing that comment? <clears throat> was he, well, was he wrong? Terrorism? Well, yeah, well yeah, let's define terrorism and, and then think about what, what they actually did. Because they fund, because you had you had outside money coming in, funding those protests, busing people in, dropping off dropping off bricks, uh, big things of bricks in in strategic areas to be used to vandalize. That came from outside money. That's an organization, and it was all. And then they stirred up the the masses to to fund this organization. Told them this is money is going to be getting redis, uh, redistributed to the community and to support of Black Lives, and and it gets and where it actually gets funded and is into. Oh, miss- Wait, 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 but misappropriating money. I agree with you on the misappropriating money and saying it's going to help black lives, but that's not terrorism. Well, that, that, he said a terrorist group. Well, you drop in, well, you, you're, you're helping bust people out there. You're dropping off bricks and, 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 and key areas for them to vandalize. And that you can look this up if you don't, because you're no, no, I'm not, I'm uh, not disagreeing with you. Yeah, I'm listening we, to what you're saying. <laughs> And it's giving me, um, yeah, I'm listening to what you're saying and how you're describing what they did. And it sounds like January 6th, bringing bombs to the area, busting it, getting everybody to one area to come. I mean, you're literally describing January 6th. Are you saying that MAGA is terrorist? No, what I'm saying, oh, I'm glad you brought up January 6th because the FBI, clearly the FBI was heavily involved with that and stirring that up with Ray Epps and, and, and there are other and people who were actually telling people to go into the Capitol, stirring it up, calling it up the day before. They were heavily involved in that. And, and all that is going to is being investigated or finally going to be investigated. The footage just came out about January 6th. All these guys are just randomly walking around and not not being violent. And as far as the bomb, as far as the bomb we don't know those bombs. Trump- we, See the footage. Didn't Those, Trump tell him to go peacefully to the Capitol building? Peacefully. To, peacefully. Yes. Yeah. So you believe Ray Epps stirred them up? Well, you, you realize that, that they still went in before, while he was talking, right? Like yeah, they, but the, the, I get what you're saying, but the yeah. question I want to ask you is, well, if they all came uh, to Washington to hear Trump and defend the claims of Trump, and he said, go to the Capitol building, you're telling me within a mile or two walk, Ray Epps, yep. some guy they didn't know from Adam, could convince them to do the exact opposite of the president that they came there to see. No, How no, does that work? No, I'm, see, I'm, I, that's why that's why I love this channel, because that, that's a great question, right? But let's look at that. The people who came to see Trump were not the people who were down there breaking into the Capitol at the time. Tr- they were already breaking into the Capitol while Trump was still speaking. And like you said, it was over a mile or two walk to even get down there. So for anyone who came to see Trump speak, and they ain't leaving before he gets done when they go to when you go to see Trump speak, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to to uh, get down there and be a part of the initial people going in. And the initial thing. So the people who he talked to, by the time they got down here, everything had already happened. The people were already in. They were already walking around. All the commotion had already been going. So, but wait, walking around. According to you, while Trump is speaking, the breach has already happened. Yes, yes, yes. You're, these events are only about two miles apart. If they're breaching the Capitol building, why would the Secret Service allow him to continue speaking when all of Congress and all of Senate are now in trouble? My, the Vice President is being ushered out. Under the cover of, of the Secret Service, why would they let this man keep speaking to a crowd where nobody's been patted down and only two miles away, the entire government is under siege? Does that make sense? Hold on. So are you disputing the fact that they broke in, that the, the, the breach on the Capitol happened while Trump? Was I'm, in, I'm, in, saying, in the- I'm saying if what you're saying is true, then I don't see why Trump himself is not and Mike Pence and everybody. Why would you let the president keep speaking when the whole government, only two miles away from you, is under siege, and you are in front of a crowd that has a noose erected? 
you would seem like you would come and tell the president, sir, we need to get you out of here. You see that noose out there? They want to put your running mate in there. Why would you let that crowd keep speaking to this guy or let this guy keep speaking to that crowd? And he hasn't searched anybody when part of the crowd has taken over the Capitol building already. Do you not see any safety risk in this? So you're assuming that the FBI didn't want this to happen. Is what I'm the saying. Secret Service and all of them, they're all in on it. Yes. They, they're, so they're, why is it that if what you're saying is true, if the if the FBI and all of these folks are in on it, why are none of the Senate and Congress folks who felt like they were in danger that day making the same claim you are? Wouldn't they have be wouldn't they be the first one to say the FBI let us down and put us in danger and they sold us out? Because their lives were in danger. Hold on, who are you talking about? The police? Because the video is I'm talking about the Republican Senate. The Republican Congress, they were the ones that were hiding and running out of the building. If they felt like the FBI sold them out, they should be the main ones saying that. And they are not saying that, even though their lives were in danger. Why are they not saying that? Why are they not? The, well, some of them have some of them have spoke out. And, and that's why they're that, why do you think they're now that they have control that the first thing on their agenda is to find out about. Uh, about the FBI informants, that, and they've been questioning. They've been bringing in uh, Merrick Garland uh, for questioning to discuss the February. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, January six attacks. Who was involved? How how much of the FBI was involved? And and all these all these things we're talking about is they're right now trying to investigate it, but they haven't had the power for two years. Uh, they didn't they they didn't control the agenda. They couldn't they couldn't do anything other than just say what they thought. Which if you I'm I'm surprised you hadn't seen that. If you said you watch a lot of uh, right wing yeah. uh, because they had. I've, I've um, seen it and discussed. I've seen it and discussed yeah. it with people. I've seen. Yeah. yeah, I've seen it. I've seen all it. I've done videos of doors so, where they were being laid in. I mean, I I know. I do understand some of the things you're saying, but the Ray Epps part really gets me. That some guy that nobody knows from Adam could convince this crime. By the way, all the 400 or whatever number it is of them that is. has been arrested for going in the Capitol building, oddly enough, none of them are blaming Ray Epps. And these are folks who would have the most benefit by saying it was a setup. Ray Epps did this. None of the folks that are being charged are blaming Ray Epps. Hold on. How many of them do you think have even been charged? They have been able to speak. They're no, not blaming Ray Epps. None of them are. No, those people are still in solitary confinement. They're, they're still. No. They, they've so been, we haven't heard from not a single one of them. Not one of them been able to call their family or say anything. No, we've heard from people who, who have already gotten out who, who've said this stuff. We've heard we've heard from other people who went on and talked. But but most of the people, uh, most of the people haven't even had a haven't had a trial. A lot of them haven't been charged with a specific crime. Yeah, I know that. They're, I'm aware they're, they're, they've been held a long time. I am aware of that part. Yeah, they're indefinitely in jail. They're not being charged. They're just sitting there and 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 rotting and going mentally insane because a lot of them are in solitary confinement. And we don't even know if they were. Now, I'm not saying there's not anyone out there who was a bad actor, because, but I'm just saying you had people who were riled up and you had some people, but you had the FBI also riling them up, trying to get them up. And if you, I don't see how, but, but, but I guess I got to move it on. You're a really good conversation, but I do got to get other yeah. people in here. But I just want to say this. I don't see how, listen, I don't care what the FBI tells me. I'm not going to rob a bank and put my life in jeopardy. I don't see how an FBI agent that you do not know could make you go into the Capitol building and put Congress and the Senate's lives in danger. Even if you're correct about the FBI rallying them up, that should not be able to happen. If you are a law-abiding citizen, nobody I, should be able to rally you up and make you do that. Hey, I agree. I agree with you totally. That should yeah. be able to happen. Unfortunately, you put a lot more faith, I think, in the government and their and their trustworthiness than than a lot of us do. Fair enough. Trust them. Fair enough. I got to move it on. Come on back to though, Brother. man. Good talk. Good talk. I would love to talk to you again in the future. No problem. All right. Absolutely. Okay. On. Uh, and by the way, folks, as I've always make it clear, I gave him a little bit more time. It was an interesting conversation. But as I make it clear, whether or not I agree or disagree with you doesn't mean a damn thing. I do always respect the free speech rights of all my guests. So 
don't believe that I always agree or disagree with any damn body. I'm going to give you time to state your point. As always, MAGA friendly program, do not ban, block, or censor anyone. You know how we talk. Get your boy up to 35,000 likes. Tap the screen. Show your boy some love. It helps out the algorithms. Liberals are welcome on the program. Understand that. But it is a MAGA friendly environment. All right, going back to the box. Aliyah. Abdullah, if I get the second portion of that. Uh, good afternoon, Aaliyah, if TikTok allows you on. Uh, hang on a second, Aaliyah. Sir, I don't know anything about, I don't know nothing about politics, but you look like Byron Scott. <laughs> okay, I'll take that as a compliment. Good afternoon, Aaliyah. Aaliyah, are you there? Okay, unfortunately. Uh, Leah was not there. Let's keep it moving. We'll go straight to Bushmaster. Okay. Say 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 no more. Let me bring on the Bush. Good afternoon to the program. Bushmaster. What's going on? Not much at all. We were talking about the actual topic is based on comedian Bill Maher, Real Politics with Bill Maher on HBO, long time show, stated that he is fearful for his safety if President Trump is reelected. He believes he said so many jokes about Trump that if Trump gets elected, he will be on a revenge tour going after his adversaries and folks' lives will be in jeopardy. Do you see any legitimate reason to be fearful for your safety or anyone being fearful for their safety if Trump is reelected? Mm, no, I wouldn't say so. Why do you think you might say something like that? I mean, everybody under, well, I, I would think most people understand a joke is a joke. If you're joking, it's one thing, but like, just because you're. Well, I don't have, you, have you ever heard someone suggest that President Obama cracking jokes on President Trump at a correspondence dinner led Trump, an angry Trump, to actually run for office? Have you ever heard that before? I've seen that. Uh, yeah of uh that happening actually so, so if it the, the reason i'm bringing it up is because some would argue that president trump does not take jokes against him very well um yeah but i don't think it uh amounted to anything other than he ran for president no shit, he ran for president and destroyed obama's legacy said the man was born in kenya i mean what else could he do <laughs> he did quite a bit to Obama. Well, I mean, how did how did he do that to him? I mean, I don't think he did it to him. I think Obama did a lot himself, you know. You think Obama did the whole birther movement to himself? Uh, yeah. How so? So that's how politics are. They'll do some they'll do stuff yeah, like Forward. How do you believe Obama did the the birther movement to himself? Huh? Oh, the birther. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, that's, that's what you're talking about. Yeah. I, something else. I misunderstood. No, he didn't do that. Okay. So, so you I do believe. realize that Trump was a tr Trump was a main factor behind the birther movement. No, no, no. I'm saying I don't think that destroyed uh, his legacy. No, no, it didn't do that. I mean, you said it did, but wait, I'm confused. No, I don't think it well, did. He, when I say destroyed his legacy, I mean all of the executive orders that Obama put in place. He literally, everything from the Iran deal to trying to chop up Obamacare as much as he could. His own constituents didn't let him do it, but that was another promise is that he was going to repeal and replace Obamacare completely. His own voters just did not allow him to do it. I think John McCain went up there and gave him a thumbs down or something like that, but he was indeed trying to destroy everything that Obama thought he had accomplished while being in office. Hmm. Well, I'm not a big fan of Obamacare, so... <laughs> Fair enough. I, don't, I, don't, I can understand that. You're not the only one I've talked to that does not like Obamacare, but I just threw, thought I'd throw it in there in terms of his legacy. So do you see Tr President Trump as the best candidate moving forward in 2024? Do you think he would be the best commander in chief for this country on the next go round? I'm going to have to say if it's between him or Biden. Yeah. And uh, if the Democrats come out with somebody better, I, I don't know. 
What if it came down to Trump or DeSantis in the primary? DeSantis? Yeah. I don't much care for DeSantis. Uh, that's just me personally. I think he's do you a, Do you consider yourself a Republican? Um, I don't like to label myself, but I guess most people would consider me a Republican. Do you consider yourself leaning to the right? I would say so, yeah. I'm pro-life. Uh, Why don't you like the Senate? The Senate huh? is an overwhelming favor with folks on the right. What is it about the Senate you don't like? Uh, he just he comes off as, uh, I don't know. I don't like him. <laughs> That's just me. got to give me more than that. You're not going to you know, bring you in the box and you walk away with some shit like that. you got to give me more than that. Why don't you like the man? I think he's a. I think he's a rhino, man. I don't think he's a actual Republican. He's just posing as a Republican. Do you see Trump as an actual Republican? Uh, he's probably more Republican than uh, than right than DeSantis that I've seen in my time. Like Bush. Oh. Do you, did you see Bush as an actual Republican? Uh, he had a lot of Republican qualities, but uh, he wasn't that good. Uh, so and- out of George W. Bush and Ron DeSantis, you see President Trump is more Republican than those other two men? Yes, sir. I personally... I why? Well, give, me, give me some reasons why you feel that way. He's uh, he's pro-life, for one. I mean, that's Republican... Republican. Yeah. That is true. Uh, That is true. He's also 70-something years old. I'm I'm going to assume a man that talks about sex and has had as much sex as Trump has probably used the pro-choice option. He's just old enough not to have to worry about it anymore. But I'll I'll give you pro-life. Give me another one. Pro-2A, even though he did advocate uh, for it being 21, which, you know. You think he's more pro-2A than Bush and DeSantis? Yeah, I would say so. But then you hear Trump suggest that. I mean, Trump did a, a host of things. He banned bump stocks. He talked about fighting with the NRA. He talked about taking guns away before giving folks due process. Bush actually got rid of the assault rifles ban. Trump talked about reinstating it. How did you give Trump more credit for 2 8 than, than George W. Bush? Well, uh, Trump has a CCW and carries. And you're judging a president by, I mean, does Bush or does any I mean, president how, need a, I mean, it's not like somebody going to shoot the president. A, answer me, how much more pro 2A can you get than having a CCW and carrying a firearm? Okay, I, I guess I can. I mean, I carry, but I don't think I'm very pro 2A, but I, I, <laughs> I kind of want to go with that, but at the same time, it's not like any president is ever going to use a firearm in self-defense. I mean, they wouldn't even let you do that. So I can't even see how that equates other than to get votes. I mean, because if you are the president of the United States, the only time you're going to be using your firearm is at a well-controlled range where you're the only one there. I mean, they're not going to let you be around firearms. People go ahead that, but you never you never know. That's why you carry, right? I'm just Who, saying. I mean, you got Secret Service agents to infinity. Sure. You think sure. you're going to need the gun in your pocket to defend yourself as president? You can't even drive. I think JFK would uh, uh, disagree with you. I'm just saying. Where, where is JFK going to return fire? He don't even know where the shot's coming from. Not to mention he's missing the back of his head. But how could I'm, JFK do anything with a firearm? It, it took his whole head off. Yeah. So even if JFK had been armed to the teeth, he was taken out by a sniper. About, he would have. Man, that, that was a bad one. How about Reagan then? <laughs> well, it, even, even in Reagan's case. President's I'm just saying, just think about it. It's been a lot. Even and- in Ronald, even in Ronald Reagan's case, he was ambushed. I mean, in, even in Ronald Reagan's case, he yeah. was surrounded by guys. One guy pulled out a sub, I think a sub Uzi or something like that. So there were plenty of firearms. Ronald Reagan wouldn't even have, even have been in a, pos- a position to return fire. By the time he realized there was a threat, he was already taking fire. 
So I don't even see Ronald Reagan's case where he's coming out of the library and the guy's hiding, hiding off in the distance. There would have been no chance even for him to return fire. He took rounds to the torso. So I, I can't see any president getting in a gunfight. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we, we never know. Yeah. I I don't know. That's like that's like buying insurance against against getting struck by lightning. I I just I mean I suppose anything is possible, but that seems a bit far fetched. But I do uh -oh. got to move it on, Bushmaster. I see the name, so what you're saying certainly uh, coincides with your name. Go let ahead. Me, let me finish with just saying this: It's better to have it not need it than to need it and not have it. Uh, Fair enough. That point of view. All right, I can't, I can't. I cannot argue with that. I cannot argue with that at all. But I got to move it on, Bushmaster. Come on back through anytime you want. All right. In the comments, this discussion is ridiculous. What is it? This discussion is ridiculous. Why does he engage with these people? The South will rise again. Cubs, 1952. Well, I would prefer Cubs 2016. That game was a little bit better. But um, listen, I always respect the opinion of the people i never talk down to my guests and like i say all the time i don't ban censor or block anyone just because we have a disagreement so that would answer the question as to why i talk to folks if you font vody for me you ain't black jim crow fjb I'm, I'm assuming what you're saying is if you don't vote for me you ain't black which would lead to the question, and you can elaborate in the comments if you can't get in the box. If you're in the box, I'll gladly talk to you. In regards to the argument that President Biden is far more intolerant towards minorities, vote for me, you ain't black, the uh, racial jungle, or the crime bill of the 90s, or even if you want to bring up Senator Byrd or some of these things that comes up, I have to ask the question, why is it that minorities do not say, feel that way? Are minorities not smart enough to know who is mistreating them? Because the overwhelming majority of folks who believe Biden is more intolerant towards minorities than Trump, the people saying that are not minorities. Very few minorities believe that Biden is more intolerant than Trump. The overwhelming number of majority, the overwhelming majority of minorities believe it is Trump. Most folks defending Trump are white, but I do understand there are some African Americans. Let me keep it moving. Tap the screen. Get your boy to 50,000 likes. Martin, appreciate those roses. Thank you for your generosity. Tap the screen. Get your boy to 50,000 likes. MAGA friendly zone. Helps out the algorithms. Brings me more MAGA. You know what I like to talk to. Let's keep it moving. Chris Logo. Welcome back to the program. A reason to fear for your life. If Trump is reelected, does that make any sense, Chris? To an extent, to me. Elaborate. I wouldn't say necessarily from Trump himself, but my take on that would be uh, him fearing Trump's followers, the, the extremist end of his following. So you believe Trump has followers that may commit bodily harm acts? I do. I do believe that. Yes. Wow. So go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, just uh, just basing that off of what we what might me personally, what I have seen, the what I would call like in quotes, the like uh, MAGA Republicans um, and how how extreme like the political spectrums have got. It just seems to me now it's more than just Democrat and Republican now. There's, you know, almost like little smaller branches off of that that have be, been becoming larger and more extreme. And that's on both sides. I wouldn't say just the right is like that. There's plenty of uh, extremists on, on the left as well. Do you feel left-wing extremists pose any danger or harm to people? I mean, I would say any extremist can pose uh danger to another person um no matter where you're at on the spectrum i i agree with that i agree with that so in regards to because we don't you don't see president trump himself as an extremist do you not an extremist i wouldn't say i mean he, he does have some goofy you know ideas and he says some crazy give me an things. example of a goofy give me an example of a goofy idea that trump has that's borderline extreme 
Uh, borderline extreme, like, I, I mean, I, I guess I really wouldn't say extreme. I'm kind of, I didn't really, I haven't been on this whole Trump thing, so I'm sorry. It's a little, like, kind of okay. on the spot. I, I just scrolled on your live. It was interesting. Um, and, you know, I just wanted to join in and, and, and chat, you know, because it, it's so not let me, too often. Let me, okay, that's, and that's fair. And I do, I certainly applaud you coming in. You're, you're welcome in any time. Do you see any... Do you, in, in regards to the 2024 election, do you see where America could do fine with Trump being reelected? Do you, I mean, would you be okay with him being our commander in chief again? I, I don't think so. I, I don't think he, just based off of, you know, what I've just previously said about like his following, I just don't feel that he would be a great representation for the Republican Party as a president. I think they could do better. I, I think they could do better than DeSantis too. Now, if you're gonna like to ask who, I'm not really sure. Like who I would say to put in there. I mean, there there are you know pl there's plenty of good Republican candidates, people that could be candidates for presidency out there. Uh, it's just that I don't think they would have the the backing to 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 be able to do it just because of the popularity that Trump has gained, and now like DeSantis is kind of following in and i'm not sure i don't know if you know has he announced a run for presidency yet i heard they were talking no he has about not him. no he has not but everyone yeah. everyone expects him to do it he's somewhat raising money and even president trump is going in on him because he expects that so it is expected i think that would hurt i mean i, I would absolutely hurt trump in my opinion if DeSantis ran against him how so i just think it would just take votes away from trump yeah. Well, you know that um what is her name? Uh Nikki Haley's already in the race. Yeah. And many folks many folks believe that Trump's core base is solid and any other Republican getting in the race makes it so that the remaining Republicans running are splitting those votes among each other. So they have a different view of yours, and that is every single additional Republican entering the race takes votes away from each other. Meanwhile, Trump has his own pile of votes that are going nowhere. So he believes, and, and many political analysts believe, extra candidates is good for President Trump. I mean, that absolutely makes sense. I, I agree with that totally. It, it can be. I would just would say, like, historically how that has just, like, happened, how someone would kind of, like, throw their hat in the ring. Like, in the, even in the... Uh, the 2020 race, like I think Bernie, like having his hand in there, kind of took away from even both. Because uh, to me, that's a 16. You're people, talking about 2016. Oh, uh, 16. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to me, I, I know people that are, you know, consider themselves Republican on the right that are like for Bernie policy and that have said they would vote for Bernie if he ran. Believe it or not. What yeah. about Bernie Sanders? If you are on the right side of the aisle, what is it about Bernie Sanders that would resonate with you? I'm not sure. I wouldn't. I'm not. I'm not either. <laughs> I, I, I'm from Pittsburgh. I live in Pittsburgh. This is a, a pretty, I mean, we're, I'm in a blue state, but I'm in a very like diverse area, like a politically diverse area. Right. Right. Um, now, like as far as then, like back in 2016, I, I, I got into politics a little bit. I wouldn't say later, but like in my late twenties, I started like diving into it. I'm 39 now. Um, but like I got more into it, obviously, when it just became more of a thing here, like with Trump, especially like that, you know, in Obama's years, I really wasn't that into it. Um, and yeah. but now, like with Trump and, and everything leading up to now, like I've got into it a little bit more. And I have to say, like when I first started, I was like, I, I can't even say I was for Trump. I was just for being Something controversial. Different. Yeah, okay. I, I wanted to be controversial. How do you feel about Biden, Biden is not controversial. He's a well-known figure, been around politics his whole damn life. How do you mm -hmm. feel about the job Biden is doing? I would say some of his. I don't. I wouldn't say that I like him as a president. And and what I get a lot, like when I share my opinions or I talk to people, it's like if I say anything negative about Trump, I automatically voted for Biden. I'm a Biden supporter. Biden this. Biden yeah. that. And that's not true. I to to be totally honest in 2020 I didn't even vote I didn't vote for either one of them to me it just wasn't I, I just I did not vote I, I made a conscious decision to not go and do it because well, the, that same ticket is likely to have a rematch are you going to make the same decision in 2024 if it comes down to Biden versus Trump again what are you doing 
I'm, I would, if it does come down to them two and it's just them two, I would just kind of educate myself on the policy that they're trying to push at the time and, and what they want to do. And it's just, it's such politics. Is so right such now a, you don't, right now you don't quite know. You, you need to see more info between these two. I would want to see a little more like what's going to happen. Biden's been in what it's like a little over two years now that he's been there. Right. And like, right. Of course. And it, it, I was just listening to somebody's, I was going through someone's videos the other day and they kind of explained that like, that, that it was a younger female. She worked um, in politics and stuff from a young age. And the way she was explaining is how like when they implement policy and when they write bills, by the time they get voted on and passed and, and, and actually become a thing, it's like, two years before you're going to see the effects of said policies. Yeah. Usually. No. I don't know about what they just did with the rolling back abortion. It didn't take nowhere near two years. It depends on what they're coming coming at you with. Like, right, for instance, right. Biden, is trying to, Biden is trying to relieve student loans to some degree. If he's successful, it's going to happen a lot sooner than two years. So it really depends. Some of the financial policies and terms for the economy, yeah, it takes a little time, but some of that stuff you do see right away. But look, Chris, I do got to move it on. Sure. Hey, our first time talking? Yeah, for sure, man. I pre- this is the first time I've seen you. I was just scrolling, seeing you on here. I'm going to give you a follow. I'll definitely. Hey, good shit. I, I, good shit. I appreciate your, uh, your takes on things. I like to be able to have civil discourse. It's really hard anymore because everyone just wants... They just they just want a reaction and they want to argue. They don't want to like learn or they don't want to take... And that's just what, what I've been going through for the past two years. I've been wanting to learn instead of being reactionary and trying to fight with people and argue. I just want to educate myself on the opinion. And I would tell anybody out there, my one thing that I take away from it all is to vote for policy, not party. Excellent. Come on back through anytime. You got it, man. Thanks a lot. By the way, in regards to what the caller just last stated, that is what we do here. Civil discourse. If you like having a civilized dialogue without all the bullshit and rhetoric, hey, feel free to follow the channel. It helps out the algorithms. You're always welcome here. And as I say all the time, the reason, the sole purpose of this is to demonstrate in this tiny ass corner of social media, if we could have civilized dialogue from I get every damn thing from, you know, left of Bernie Sanders to I'm sitting down having dinner with QAnon and we make it happen. Without a moderator, that is how we do it. If that is what you prefer, that is the kind of conversation you enjoy without fear of censorship or being banned, hey, follow the program. I will keep it moving. Looking in the comment section, Trump lied about where he was from originally. Why? You know, all politicians lie, but yeah, when it comes to Trump, he has he has told some fibs on some things that you do wonder, like this is something that could be easily fact-checked. Kind of like Hillary Clinton saying she was in a war zone when she wasn't. Like, people are going to know that. I mean, so, um, this, what is his name, Santos, the congressman from New York? Like, you're lying about things that people are going to readily fact-check. You're talking about you're on a volleyball team. Well, there were people on that team that's going to come forward and say your ass didn't play a game with us. So I, I never could understand, you know, any politician telling a lie about something that could easily be fact checked. Some of these folks lie about things you could easily Google. Like, for instance, President Trump suggesting that his inauguration crowd was larger than anybody else's. Like, you do realize there are like air photo shots of everybody's inauguration crowd. Like, so... If you want to lie about something that's your personal life or it's hard to find out, that's one thing. But, you you, you know, it's almost like an ins- insulting someone's intelligence when they can just quickly Google something and prove your lie. All right, going back to the box. We'll keep it moving with C.C. Hancock. Aaliyah, I think I saw Aaliyah in there. I dropped out the first time. C.C., good afternoon. Hey, Welcome to the program. Hey. Can you hear me? Can you hear me okay? Okay. Loud and clear. Is there a reason to be fearful for one's safety if Trump is reelected? I agree with the last caller. It's the mega. The mega. Whatever you want to call it. So you believe it is, you don't believe, you believe Trump supporters are, are a potential danger? Yes. Wow. Yes. So... So if a comedian, if a comedian is traveling the country, 
making really good jokes about President Trump. And Trump has mentioned, you know, at a rally or two, how much they despise this comedian or the comedian lies or, you know, talks about things and, you know, fake news and all of that. You believe that comedian's life could be endangered by a member of, you know, by MAGA, somebody who identifies as a Trump supporter. Absolutely, I do. But wow. I think there's so many, there's so many comedians that are doing that. You know, all the comedians, late night, they're they're all making fun. So he's yeah. not he's not in the boat alone. I mean, he may make more fun than the rest, but I can I can see where he's coming from. I, I really now, you, real quick, I just want to interrupt you. You're really low. I don't know if you're way away from your microphone. I can I'm trying to hear you, but you your audio is pretty low. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, it's fine. In the comments, okay. we can watch this. Okay, there is much better, much, absolutely much better. So, what okay. about the fact that, say, Obama, late night television host, the Jimmy Kimmel's, Jimmy Fallon's, the Conan O'Brien, they were far more friendlier towards Obama. They didn't, they didn't make anywhere near the jokes about Obama as they do about Trump. Do you think that's unfair? No, Obama was a good, de decent man. He was a good, so you don't decent... See, you don't see President Trump as a good, decent man? My God, no. 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 <laughs> he no. To explain that. I need to know why. Why don't you see Trump as a good, decent guy? He Look, he doesn't care about us. He doesn't care about them. He cares now, about I just him. Had a, I had a caller on earlier that said one of the reasons why America voted for Trump is because he was able to connect with the common man. It felt more like he was a working man's president. Now, you're saying just the opposite. Why do you see him as not someone that the working man can relate to? Look, I, I mean, I think I think what happened was people were just tired of politicians. I, I think that the people were just tired of politicians and they wanted to try something new with a so-called businessman. Although this man has bankrupted, what, six, seven businesses. He has uh, not paid his workers. Um, and it goes on and on and on. Well, he, but you got you to gotta assume anybody would, literally hundreds of LLCs and dozens of businesses. I mean, just because a few of them go bankrupt doesn't mean you don't see that as uh, that alone as saying he's not a good businessman, do you? I mean, that happens. Six or seven times. Come on. How many, yeah, but how many businesses do the, do the man have? When you talk about six or seven bankruptcies, we're putting this in a scale of regular people. Trump has businesses all over the world. The, the business, the business uh, profile of this guy is unheard of. I mean, he's a billionaire. So I'm not d defending Trump, but I'm, I'm trying to just, I guess, get a more clearer picture to... The point of if someone has as many businesses as Trump does, some of them are not going to succeed as much. I mean, the guy has a hell of a lot of business. He has a hell of a lot of business, but he doesn't know how to run them. So how the hell can he run this country? He drove this country in the ground. He has he's divided us. I I look, I never voted for the man. You know, and I, I didn't have, um, I, I wanted Hillary. Um, was I disappointed? Yes. But I, I realized that I have to face the fact that he is our president and I have to go with the flow with him. You know, I have to accept it and move on. And then how did you feel about the but how did you feel about the country under Trump though? Some would some would argue that the economy and things like that, certainly your 401k retirements accounts and price for fuel were far better under Trump than they are for Biden. Do you see how did you think about Trump's job in terms of the economics of America? I don't see what everybody's talking about about having so much more money. I I haven't been hurt by Biden. I wasn't hurt or benefited by Trump. I'm not, you know, I haven't lost anything. I'm you haven't good. paid more for fuel to cost of goods and service. You haven't paid more for anything in your life under Biden? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But you can't we can't blame Biden for that now. We can't blame Biden for that. 
So you don't you don't see Biden as having responsibility for anything in, in regard to the U.S. economy? I think that there's possible things that he could do, but we were in a pandemic. You know, this the pandemic, if I believe that if that was handled properly under Trump, I believe he would have been president again. And you're that's not the scary. only one to say that. Yeah, that's you're scary not the only to one. say. That's scary to say, but that's, and I wouldn't have voted for him, but I truly believe if he would have handled that differently and not try to hide it or play it off, he would have, yes, if he would have handled it, he would have been president again. Now, Biden ran as a unifier because just like what you're saying, many folks believe that Trump was divisive. After two years of Biden in office, do you see Biden as unifying America? I think he's trying. Yes. What I about the ultra what about the ultra MAGA comments? You know, he gets on television, there's a red background, he got Marines standing there and he's criticizing the hell out of MAGA. Do you see any divisiveness in that? With uh with Biden? Yeah. No. Good. I don't. All right. Now, he does speak negatively of MAGA, though. You, you would admit that, right? Yes, he should. We all should be. They're, they're too extreme. Bring it down some. Bring it down. <laughs> give, me, give me some examples of how you believe MAGA is extreme. Well, uh, January 6th. January 6th. I can't argue with January 6th. I can't argue. Give me another one, though. No. I, I, that is, um, that is something that should never have happened. We were not prepared at all for something like this to happen. And I hope we're prepared the next time. Um, I, you know, just the things that took place and him, uh, though, as a president, having people setting up in trees with their lawns and saying, you know what? Don't bother them. They're not after me. So let me let me pose this question to you, because this is coming in the, in the comments. Colin Morris is saying that January 6th was a setup. How do you respond to people who say that? Because there's a lot of folks that believe President Trump had nothing to do with January 6th, and others believe that it wasn't even Republicans or MAGA involved at all. <laughs> <laughs> so give me your take on that. Are you trying to get me banana? I've already seen one. I've already seen one banana. I'm I'm trying my best. I'm, doing my you know, I'm best. gonna I'm gonna plead ignorance because I don't always know these new terms. Sometimes I'll slip up and say like unalived. It took me probably three months to realize why people were saying a word that's not even a real word. Like un is banana yeah. the new term for getting kicked <laughs> off the app? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've, never, I've been hearing people say that. I've been hearing people talking. I'm like, is this a porn? What is people saying banana so much? So okay, now I know what a banana I got, is. Look, I've been banana a couple times. I got to be careful. Oh my lord! I got to be careful with you and your people or your non people. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I won't get you banana. That that's funny, CC. I, hey, listen, I gotta move it on, but I'll give you the last one. I do appreciate you holding on and teaching me new words. It's great. <laughs> banana. I won't get you banana. <laughs> I got you. I got a few more words. I'll just pass along every sure. day, buddy. Sure. Always a pleasure. Nice talking to you, buddy. Absolutely, absolutely. Good talk. Banana. I won't get you banana. I didn't know. Like I said, I hear words, you guys, because obviously, even my own program, where I try to be as you know reasonable with guests, no matter what side of the aisle they're on. Occasionally, I get canceled. I talked about the um, the Dilbert comic strip guy. I think it was on Monday, and I was taken down for a few days. I think I won the appeal, which is why I'm back out here with you folks. But now I know when folks say you're going to get banana, I learned a lot of shit. Now, what's crazy is. This app is controlled by folks in a different country. How do they know so much about our language that we now got to create new words to, to try to fool people whose, whose language is not even, whose mother tongue is not even English? Tap the screen. Get your boy up to 70,000 likes. 
Should be around 1K, but uh, the algorithms are playing games. So tap the screen. Get your boy up to 70,000 likes as we keep it moving. Uh, real quick in the comments here. Uh, they just have bots to pick certain words. That sucks. I do believe that, too, by the way. Um, the N-word certainly does it because I've had uh, live streams going on with well over 1,000 people. And the minute somebody says that, it drops down to 49 and then pops back up. So it makes it clear the app just caught that damn word. And as I always say, I don't ban block or censor anyone for saying anything, but I do not have access to the TikTok gods. So sometimes they will overrule your boy. So certainly don't get on here and say that word. All right, going back to the box. Uh, it is Jerry... Wait, wait, hang on a second. I tell somebody else who's there. We'll go to Jerry, uh, Jerry Williams. I appreciate all you folks that are trying to get to you, but you know how this works. You got good me. afternoon, Jerry. You got me. Always a good. So Trump getting reelected. Folks are suggesting that they would fear for their lives. Bill Maher, the comedian, actually said if Trump got a, if Trump is to get reelected, he fears for his own safety. Is there a reason for someone to fear for their safety? From Trump, twenty twenty four. No, I don't think so. They, I believe there there'll be some more um, Antifa and BLM riots and stuff again. Try to make things that you know get un, un, Let me ask you that. now that's a that's a good point. Let me ask you this, and you give me your take <laughs> on it. Now, under <laughs> President, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, I heard some. Okay, under President Trump. <laughs> Many folks, you know, will give Trump credit for the fact that we had no major wars. Now, under President Biden, although we have a proxy war with Russia, we don't have all of the riots going on all over the country. So when you talked about BLM and Antifa, any idea why they are so calm under President Biden versus President Trump? I mean, police are still doing stuff, but yet <laughs> under President Biden, you don't have anywhere near all of the riots and stuff. Why is that? Well, you're correct about that, but I believe you, you um, send that back to Soros and Pelosi and Schumer and, Schumer and Soros, all the Democrats. How can uh, George happy. Soros or Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer stop a riot? What can they but do to they stop still, that? I don't think they – Um, it just ain't instigated as much as it is if a Republican's in charge. So, as, you as believe, so you believe when George Floyd lost his life, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi were instigating those no, riots? No, 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 no. No, no. That, that deal there, them, them police officers brought that on their own. And what they got is what they deserve. Okay, fair enough. But I'm trying to that's see. You're, you're, okay, and that's and, and that's that's fair enough. But you're saying that Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer can instigate Black Lives Matter riots? Well, I believe they. Um, I, I believe they instigated January 6th, too. How could they instigate? What would what do you think they did to instigate well, January 6th? Well, you know, from what I understand, that that. that the Trump tried to call it the National Guard and all that, and it all got shut down. And from that forward, it's all secret and quiet. There ain't nothing, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing there. It's all quiet. Nobody wants no answers. But yet they so, want to all blame it on Trump. Do you, so how do you feel? Because I know, you, I don't know if you watched the January 6th hearings or not. A lot of folks don't believe they were ill fairly or whatever the case may be. But during the January 6th hearings, it was stated that Sean Hannity, Laura Ingram, uh, Chris Christie, and a host of other Republicans were trying to get in contact with Trump during those four hours or so when that stuff was going on and he wouldn't answer the phone. Now, you're saying he tried to send help. Any idea why they would say that, that he was not answering the phone, could not be gotten in contact with, they had to beg him to go on television? No, no sir. I, ain't, I, I, had no, I, I had never heard none of that. Okay. You know, I, I do got some problems with Trump about – I used to stand behind him a thousand percent, but now, you know, even when he was in office, I, I think he needs to – he needs to lower that tone and quit being so brash. I mean, it will help him so much. Do you think he would be the best president going forward in 2024? Um, I'm more of a, a Nikki Haley fan myself because I'm in South what? Carolina. 
<laughs> if I had a golden buzzer, I would give it to you. You are the first right winger I've heard that says Nikki. I have not talked to anyone that supports Nikki Haley. Give me your spiel. Why do you think Nikki Haley is the one going forward? Well, she did tons for South Carolina. And then she went and she was our ambassador. And things were yeah. pretty quiet and peaceful there, too. She she's she's serious. I mean, she got our the rebel flag, the Confederate flag taken down. She went out there and do it with all the protests and her being a Republican. She goes out there and gets that flag taken down and gets it put in a museum and um, told people, if, if you don't like it, you, you know, shame on you. This is the way it's going to be. And you got to respect her for that. Damn right. I kind of like She's you, man. Maybe, I, what about Ron DeSantis? Would you pick her over Ron DeSantis? Well, I, I think, and you know, Ron would probably beat her, but I, I, I'd pick her though because I, I kind of stick with what she, where she comes from, and, and what she's been through, and how far she's carried herself up the ladder to, um, in politics, that she'd just be. We need a, a first woman president. In my oh. home, hey, have you been? Uh, have you been Republican most of your life, or did you just find that part? I mean, you sound more you know, progressive. All my life. Me. All my life. Wow. But I, didn't, now, I, didn't get I have politics. to ask this question. I'll let you continue, but I have to ask this question: Are you from Carolina by the chance? In South Carolina? Yes, sir. Are you actually, yes, huh? South Carolina, born and raised. There we go. I knew something. <laughs> okay. All right. There we go. Fair enough. <laughs> Haley, wow. <laughs> okay. I didn't but, um, expect that. I mean, Haley, I mean, she turned our economy around. We didn't have no, you know, we wasn't, um, we didn't know nobody. We, we we were square. And I believe the woman don't play. She ain't, she's not no games. I'm telling you that right now. She's, if she tells you something, she means it. Well, you do realize she's about to get destroyed by President Trump, don't you? <laughs> Once he start debating her, that's going to be it for her. Nikki Haley yeah. won't be able to get a job as a crossing guard after Nick after Trump get done with her. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. What about Carrie Lake? Straight out um, the comments, how would you feel about Carrie Lake? Well, she can't. She did. She ain't even won nothing in her state. And I mean, I, and, this, and, then, and then her doing this, just fighting back. Like Trump did, hey, it didn't do him no good, and it ain't doing her no good. She needs to take a whooping and go back and try again. You are That's one of opinion. the most. You are one of the most moderate right wingers I've talked to in a long time. Carrie, I mean, uh, you, Nikki Haley. Wow, I'm gonna have to note your name so I can pet it. We've talked before too, haven't we? Yes. Sir. No, this is my first time on. Now, okay. I, I always, always sit and watch, but. Um, I had this is my first time ever being on any kind of live. Damn, you, you I, draw I, me I, right I, in. I wouldn't doubt if there, I can see that some folks might want to silence you. You actually got a really good spill for Nikki Haley with moderate liberals that may be unhappy with President Biden. Certainly, that whole Confederate flag argument and things you made. And you know, the fact right. that she, you're, you're speaking from a position of unity. Some of the stuff yeah. you're saying, yeah, that's that's different, man. You need to, yeah. you actually, it would serve Haley a bit for to have someone like you volunteer. I mean, you got good conversation, man. Well, we do got it. We do as a country, we do got to, um, we got to stop this. I mean, it's got to stop all this, you know, division and oh, you didn't do this right, and you did not, you cost the country this much money and. Trump didn't do this, and Biden didn't do this. It's got to stop. I believe Nikki Haley will stop it. Wow. I lean left. Obviously, you see the name of the program, but yes, sir. I, I could certainly sit down and listen to your conversation anytime, and I do got to move it on, but wow. Come on back it. in here anytime you want. I, I appreciate it. Have a good day, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. hear that much in regards to my last caller. Hell, even from liberals. You don't hear that type of unifying conversation much at all. Obviously, the Trump camp is, for the most part, fuck your feelings. The liberal camp is, for the most part, fuck Trump. So you don't get that type. In the middle of that sea of division, you get a caller like that? 
Where the hell did he come from? I mean, does he have a horn out of the top of his head? I really enjoyed that conversation, but I may never talk to anyone else like that again on this program. Nevertheless, let's keep it moving. Tap the screen. We might get 80,000 likes if you guys show your boys some love. As always, I don't ban, block, or censor anybody. I love the com this comment here coming from Slick as Rick. He was the closest thing to a real patriot. I could not have said that better myself. That was a patriotic man talking. I don't know. I think I'm... Okay, there we go. I thought I was freezing up today. That was Yeah, that was a really... Really good, uh, and, and short and sweet, short and sweet to the point. Let me keep it going. He caught me off guard. He was so, so reasonable. All right, we'll keep it moving with, uh, I thought he was in here, but he dropped out. So we'll keep it moving. Uh, Jordan's mom, good afternoon. Welcome to the program. Appreciate you folks that are tapping the screen, getting your boy to 80,000 likes. MAGA friendly program. Nevertheless, liberals are welcome to. Uh, looks like it's freezing up on my guests. While that's going, we'll continue in the comments. My son just got diagnosed with Down syndrome. Wondering if I could get a, wondering if I could get your downer advice. I don't know anything about that illness other than the visuals that it, you know, that it bestows upon an, on a human. I, I can recognize somebody that has it, but I don't know anything about it beyond that. Uh, yes, I agree. The Great Reset. What is the Great Reset? That sounds kind of scary. <laughs> what is it? Okay, we'll keep it moving. Apparently, my last call I tried to bring in, it's not acting right. So we'll make it happen with, uh, who else has been in here? Uh, Kiss My Grits. <laughs> That's a hell of a now We talked before. Kiss My Grits. Hi. Good afternoon. I mean, free. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, hey, so you're, you're talking about people's, go ahead. People saying if Trump is in office, the world will be more dangerous, or the people in this country yeah, will be more dangerous. Um, has anybody recalled that the 43 year old man ran over an 18 year old for a political dispute because Biden yeah. called ultra MAGA? A threat to democracy. So, so, so nobody's nobody's thought about that, but yet Trump Where is the problem. At? Wait a minute, a forty-three-year-old. Where did that happen at? Here in the states, I don't remember where though. This was some when months did ago. That, when did that happen? Uh, someone says North Carolina. Oh, I, I was so as I soon as Biden said that, that happened. I don't know. I don't know. Did, did when they caught the individual that did it, did he did he suggest that it was because of what Biden said? Yeah. Yes. Mm. He okay. thought so you he do... was in trouble, but yet he didn't yeah. run over the kid once. He ran and backed over him a second time. It's on video mm. recording. Yeah, I think I, I think I heard about it, but I didn't know that was the reasoning behind it. So, so you do buy into the fact that Trump could turn this country into some folks would say the purge, but you do believe there could be violence if Trump is reelected. Well, it's no different than what it's doing now. What do you mean? What people are doing to the people here in the United States because. Oh, they got a different view. Do you see how many coon pictures that was on just because you got that Make America hat again? They're calling you a coon. Why? Yeah, I, yeah, I get that all the time. I mean, it's it's generally from other African Americans. It's black people, people that look like me, that, that are not reading the name of the program. They instantly see the hat. You must be a Trumper. You're, you know, a sellout. I get it every single broadcast. I get that. Now, I, I have know. had. I have had viewers write me and apologize because they did see the visuals and went with that alone. But then they started listening to the program and they're like, no, this ain't this is nothing like what I thought. And they, I have had people write me and say that. But, yeah, I get that on every broadcast, every broadcast. So so who's actually the threat? Well, calling me a coon doesn't wonder make me now, feel doesn't it? 
Well, no, because calling me a coon doesn't make me feel in doesn't make me feel it like no, I'm at risk no, no, for my no. safety. But it's still racist people in this country that wants to cause harm for different opinions. Why? So you believe if someone calls me a sellout or a coon or something, that's a racist person wanting to cause harm? Don't you think being called a coon is a racist remark? No, it, it ain't. It's, it's derogatory. But to me, calling me a coon would when be a like white calling, person calls you that. When a white person calls you that, that's it's not, not racist. It's, it's well, do you want to bet? I've seen the pictures. I've looked them up. You want to bet? I would. I would like to see that. No, I didn't know that. I didn't. I have. I get so many comments flying by, but no, I haven't seen that. I don't. I've never seen. You know, we might be even, on different political views. I would never, never call somebody that. No, I have not seen many white people throughout history. Even if you're talking to Ben Carlson's or the, uh, what is the guy, the, the the black guy on the Supreme Court that wants to roll back Roe versus, I haven't even seen white people call those kind of folks a coon or something. Rachel I've never Ma seen white whoa, whoa, whoa. That term. Rachel, Rachel Maddow. Called him the N word with a hard E R. Where did you talk about Thomas? Where oh my God, she that? put it on a tweet. Rachel Maddow called Clarence Thomas the N word. Yes. Someone See, said something, my saying email, something if, of, the, the my email something address is on, on the, the, yeah. My email same, address is on the front of my profile. Somebody send me that. I need to see that. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I'll do you one even better. No, don't phone. play it on the program. Wait a minute. Do no, not, it's not playing. It, it, okay. it's a do not it's say not the N word over this program. All right. Okay. Your your email's on this? Yes. It's on the front of the okay. page. But don't get, don't get up there. Yeah. Send, send it to me because I, I have never heard. Rachel Maddow is well respected on the left side of the aisle. And I've never heard because. Even you know, even Eminem was accused of calling somebody N word, and they went out to him, and he's obviously well respected in the hip hop community. If Rachel Maddow had to use the N word, I can't believe I didn't hear about that. Even if she was using it on on um, Clarence Thomas, who a lot of folks do believe is a sellout, but I can't imagine her using that. I'd have to see that. Okay, I you bet. Back. I would love, I would love to see it. I would love to see it because I, I mean, are there any articles written on it? Did, did I mean even Fox News would have brought that up? How is she getting the pass? Is what you would have heard on the five or on um on it what was is her it, the, tweet? It was her tweet on MSNBC, and nobody went after her for that. Oh, there's videos of it. No major network went out there for that. I don't. I don't know. I don't watch any of the news. That doesn't make sense. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. Because, like I said, Fox News does not like the when when Af when African Americans treat one side one way and they're more harsh towards white folks. If Rachel Maddow had done that, Fox News would have certainly covered that. Fox and Friends. I tell you what, everybody for everybody that says I'm lying and I put it up, y'all all owe me an apology. I will give you one personally, Kiss My Grits. We've talked before many times. We've talked I will before, certainly yes. I'll I'll contact you on my night program and put it put your name on a monitor in the monitor. I've never heard that, but I want to see that. But I gotta move it on. You definitely got me got me interested in looking something up, but I do gotta move it on. But wow. Okay, Rachel you know, Maddow using the N-word. Yes. The hard ER. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm gonna look it up. We'll talk again soon. Okay. All right, appreciate it. Uh, look it in the comment section. Now, I see there are no shortage of folks saying that what she said was not true, but I also saw somebody say that they had pulled it up as well. So, Rachel Maddow would absolutely know better, though, wouldn't she? I mean, she pretty much would be giving the keys to a Black Lives Matter rally. African Americans favor MSNBC. Now, I don't watch a lot of MSNBC at all. I'm more of a CNN and Fox News kind of guy. But I do know of the program. I mean, I watch so much Fox News, I can recite their entire damn lineup. But um, Rachel Maddow is, yeah, she's highly favored by folks on the left. I mean, Sharpton worked at the network and she got away with the N-word? That's amazing. I, I would need to see that. Um, looking in the comments, of course, 
Maddow would never say this. It's just a lie. Somebody uh, says uh, slow train. I'm going to be more on the side of it would be incredibly surprising to see Rachel Maddow using the And certainly when you look at what happened to Don Lemon, Don Lemon was crit literally was sexist towards Nikki Haley, insinuating that because she's in her 50s, she's out of her prime. And CNN took her took him off the air for a few days for criticizing a female Republican that served under Trump. But Rachel Maddow can use the N-word against a black person? She would be gone. <laughs> On the left-wing network, she would be completely eradicated from television. I need to see proof of that. I am very interested in seeing that. I need to see proof of that. Um, 51 is out of their prime. Yeah, I agree with you, um... Hug, Hugo Hero, yeah, what, what uh, Don Lemon said was wrong. 51 is certainly not out of your prime, but they took him off the air. You think if Trump had said that, they would have took him off the air? No. <laughs> but, yeah, um, Don Lemon was wrong for saying that. But Rachel Maddow using the N-word is far, far worse. Let's keep it going. Uh, in the comment section, there's a lot of you new folks. I do appreciate you tuning in. It is Lady T. If President Trump is reelected, would it be a safety risk for some of his adversaries? Bill Maher said to CNN, I believe, yesterday, is there a reason to truly be fearful for your safety if Trump is reelected? Lady T. Well, hi. Thanks for uh, hi. having me. I didn't think I would be on. I figured there's a long line of people. But this is my first time reviewing your, your show, and I'm truly enjoying it um oh, awesome, and for I'm Bill, Bill Moore, I think that I think the bigger question is uh coming from the perspective of Bill Maher and I don't understand sure. where he would feel threatened as far as his life being threatened if I think that there's more of a fear of physical fear if Trump is not reelected hence uh January 6th so you well, believe you believe if Trump loses, January six could happen again? I do believe that, but or more on a um, broader scale, national scale, I think that they would uh, conspire and plan to wreak havoc at um, in various cities throughout the country. I don't think that the full focus would be in Washington D.C., but I think that they've probably study January 6th. Um, there was enough arrests to be made that might have put the fear in some people to not do that again, right. but it might incite people to plan better. And What and about President Trump? What about the idea of President Trump? Because folks say he, folks say that he suggested when they go to the Capitol building that they go peacefully. In the future, what about the possibility of President Trump? Let's say he loses, as you pointed out, but he tells his people, "Don't do anything stupid. It was a fair election." Is there any possibility that he may be sensible during the next elect the, the next election? Okay, and then we will be um, living in the in the alternate universe. With, with Spider Man, in other words, no. in other with words Spider Man no. <laughs> and Ant Man, and it would not be a real universe because that's never going to happen. Trump is a narcissist who enjoys the attention. Um, he speaks in dog whistle language, that <laughs> encrypted language that um, they understand. And so, give me an, without, you, I can't just let you get away with that. Give me an example of a dog whistle you've heard Trump say that you believe they understood. Well, the first thing is what your hat says: "Make America Great Again," and okay. that was that's what drew them in because they're remembering a time when, for because for people of color, America was was not great for Never us, great. no matter Never what great. time, place and time in the past that you place us, we're always we're going to be an oppressed people. But for someone that longs for uh, times that were seen to be that their whiteness was not threatened, 
three. What do you old- mean? Wait, wait, wait. So you're suggesting that in 2023, Caucasians are having their whiteness threatened? How does that work? It hasn't been only in 2023. But however, I think that there is a, a fear that something's going to be taken away from them. And I believe that uh, Trump was the answer to alleviate those fears. I feel but like is there, Trump... is there any is there any validation in those fears? If I'm a white man, do I have any reason to fear that something is going to be taken away from me? Um, if I were to imagine myself as being white, I think that um, when you see the influx of brown people coming to America, or that if it's it's feeling like there's fewer uh, white people. They're feeling like their jobs are being taken away from them. They feel like, um, you know, with um, people crossing the border, you know. But is any, of that, is any of that fear based on reality, though? Um, you know, uh, they it isn't because uh, there are plenty of jobs to go around. Also, if you look at it, Um, When you look at marginalized communities, um, the white power structure um, is so steeped in the American fabric that I heard a saying that you can eliminate, this is just a saying, if there were no white people on this earth, white supremacy is so strong and so steeped in everyday culture that it would thrive without even the existence of white people because Damn. everything that was built in um, is is built and structured on white supremacist systems. And Damn. so, so, so it, in regards to what you just said, because it's, it's a little off topic, but it relates to what you said. Um, about a month or so ago, you had five officers in Memphis charged mm-hmm. for killing an African-American. And even yeah. though the officers were black, the victim was black, hell, the entire police department is black. I think there were maybe one or two officers were white, but all mm-hmm. of the main players were black. Folks still suggested that that entire event, black police officers abusing a black man had white supremacy overtones. And even though there were no white people really present, is that similar to what you're talking about? Right, exactly. I believe it. I think that, like, for instance, my my husband was a black police officer. Now he's the first black judge in our county. And uh, so that doesn't negate that we still work under a white supremacist um, system. Um, the We can be, be indoctrinated into that culture um, and when we look at not the perpetrator, but we look at what, what the, the color of the victim is. So whether it's a black officer, whether it's a white officer, an uh, Asian officer, you always got to look at the victim, the recipient of the brutality. And in common, it's likely black and brown people. And that's where the commonality comes in. So how do you respond to something like President Trump suggesting that there are just as many, if not more, whites that are mistreated by police than blacks. I think you just have to look at the statistics. If there were, if there were, for one, um, if there were statistics properly um, taken throughout with every, if there is a mainstream system in which to, um, to be able to identify First, you have to identify if it was race based or or, um, you know, police brutality based on someone's race. Um, If we could collect that data, I think it will show that overwhelmingly that black communities are policed more often than their white counterparts. Well, then you you have to. But but I'm going to give you the next counterpoint. If we point out that black communities are policed more often than whites, the first response is going to be because that's where the crime is being committed. So how do you respond to folks who suggest that more blacks are being dealt with by the system because they're committing more crimes? How do you respond which, to that? And which I think that is pure just conjecture. I think that statistics will show that white people are committing as much crime as blacks. For instance, um, 
black people don't smoke marijuana more often than white people. However, we're going to get busted for it more more frequently because our neighborhoods are being um, are being targeted uh, more frequently, and so we're profiled. We are, um, you know, absolutely looked at as the main perpetrators of breaking the law. Yes, there are some some things that plague other, the communities. Um, you know, uh, the drug sales and usage and things like that, and perhaps some gang activity and and guns. But where are they getting the guns from? You know, where are the drugs coming mm-hmm. from? We're talking right. about low level drug dealers, and so. Um, so drugs were absolutely introduced, and I'm not saying that we are, you know, a, uh, a victim. However, we have to look at issues of that there's inequities going on in certain communities. Well, so let, let me let me run this from my, I do got to move it on, but before I let you go, then how do you respond to folks who point out that in many of these uh, controversial police killings, beatings, and things like that. There is no shortage of folks who will say, if that individual had just complied with the law, they wouldn't <laughs> be in that situation. How do you view? How do you respond to folks who suggest that? Oftentimes, blacks come to these unsavory endings because they're not complying with the law. That is such a great question, and one that I absolutely just pondered myself because I hear this often, and sometimes when I'm faced with that question, how would I answer it? But I would say that the person that is saying that, put their loved one, their own son in that in that predicament. And would they also feel that their son should have been shot and killed in the back? Great answer. And so answer. that I think they would answer their own question. I think communities, I think we need to empathize with one another and stop just looking at someone's color and saying that they deserved that type of, uh, just because they weren't compliant with the law. I see video after video after video when a white man um, is not compliant with an officer, but he gets to walk away and go back home to his family. There are a lot of videos of that. All right, Lady T, you know what I got to do. Good talk. First time, always a pleasure. Come on back through anytime. I'm now you'll have you'll see me more and more. Thank you. No, oh, I'm touched. Good talk. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Looking at and, and in what um what she was saying. Yeah, there are no shortage of videos. I believe audit the police is one where you for the most part have Caucasians with cameras that will literally go out in public and challenge the police. Whether it's walking down the street open carry with a firearm, going to the police station and filming the police cars. They do a lot of shit on that channel, out at the police, to see if the police know what is legal and what is not. And no, she's right. They don't get their ass beat. They get they do get accosted by police, but no, they don't get shot and things like that. So I will leave it at that. But in regards to her point about if it was my son or daughter, how would I feel? I've seen folks, some folks in the comments point out that, well, my son would not uh, refuse to comply. And I, that's the way I, you know, would would view it as well. I would hope my daughter wouldn't do anything like that as well. But my entire advice on African-Americans dealing with police, very similar to Chris Rock. Any of you saw the, the old Chris Rock video when he had his HBO show about if you run from the police and ass whooping is coming with it, or if you talk shit, they're going to beat you up. That's true. That is the way things have been in America for most of our history, particularly for African-Americans. Now, I'm not saying any of that is right. Most of it is outright illegal. Nevertheless, until the system changes, we have to realize that is what can happen. So talking shit and not expecting an ass whooping is kind of the abnormal. And I've always advised folks, when someone has a gun at you, whether it is a bank robber someone robbing a liquor store, or someone with a badge on. Treat that person that is yelling commands out at you as if they may shoot you. Unfortunately, what a lot of folks do when they view cops is, if I run, he can only do that. If I hit him, he can only do this. If I spit on him, he can only do that. You wouldn't do that to a bank robber. 
or someone that was robbing a liquor store because you would feel like they might shoot my ass if I do something stupid. Until the police are in the position where you feel confident they're going to follow those rules, follow the Constitution, treat them like bank robbers. If a guy has a gun aimed at you and he's yelling instructions at you, understand if you don't follow those instructions, he may shoot you. You're not going to get shot by a bank robber and be like, well, he should have knew better. No, you, you know that this person with a gun is dangerous. You have to view police like that until something changes. Some folks would argue that they are just another gang in blue. But understand if they're aiming a firearm at you and yelling a list of instructions, the late Ashley Babbitt for all my MAGA supporters out there, I'm talking to her too. She had a firearm aimed at her. There's a lot of folks that you know, identify as MAGA support Trump that look at the non-compliance of Ashley Babbitt a hell of a lot different than, say, Sandra Bland, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, or some of the folks on the other side. She had a firearm aimed at her. During a mob action event, she ignored the police, proceeded, tried to proceed through a barricade, and got shot. She got shot. If that had happened on the other side, folks would be saying the same thing. You got to comply with the law. Anyhow, folks, as usual, you know what I do about this time. I appreciate you getting your boy up to 90,000 likes. Always the solemn promise I do not ban, block, or censor anyone for their commentary. The fact that you may disagree with the host never means a damn thing on the program. Give you plenty of time in the box to state your point. Program is and all will remain MAGA friendly. MAGA are my prof Could be anywhere you want to be on social media. You rolling with your boy. I appreciate that. However, this is a lunch break live. And like we always do about this time, I do got to step away. I'm basic. Thanks for the roses. I'll catch you guys on the next live stream, 1130 a.m. Central. It's your boy, Tim, the handsome liberal. I got to go.